Thanks, Steve. Good morning, everybody. Um, as Steve mentioned, I'm here to give you an update on our preparations for the one-year anniversary of October 7th. The past 12 months have been hard on many in our local community, as well as many communities around the world. It's been especially hard for people who have been deeply impacted by the October 7th Hamas attacks on Israel and the ongoing military conflicts in the Middle East. Although these conflicts are happening over 10,000 kilometers away, they have serious ramifications for us here in Vancouver. In the coming days, as we move closer to the one-year anniversary of October 7th, I know that some people will have feelings of unease and anxiety. Whether you're a person of Jewish or Muslim faith, someone who comes from or has loved ones in the Middle East, or someone who feels impacted by the ongoing crisis, I want you to know that we at the Vancouver Police Department are here to provide a sense of reassurance, calm, comfort, and safety during this difficult time. Over the past year, we faced serious public safety challenges following the October 7th attacks. This includes an unprecedented number of protests, demonstrations, and vigils that have drawn many thousands of people to Vancouver from surrounding communities. We are the epicenter of the province for protests and similar events. Many people have exercised their democratic rights, guaranteed under Section 2 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, to assemble and express their opinions. And while the majority of these gatherings have been lawful and peaceful, others have been extremely volatile. We've seen violence, hostility, assaults on police officers and members of the public, and incidents of hate during some of these events. In other situations, we've seen significant disruption where protesters turn to intimidation and disorder and attempts to overtake pieces of critical infrastructure, including bridges, railway lines, and streets. Through it all, our VPD officers have done an exceptional job under challenging circumstances to keep the peace, maintain public order, prevent crime, and make arrests whenever necessary. Over the past year, hate crimes and incidents of anti-Semitism have had a profound impact on members of our Jewish community. In the first 100 days following the October 7th attacks, we saw a 62% increase in reports of anti-Semitism. Some of the more troubling incidents over the past year include the attack on the Shara Zedek synagogue this past May when an arsonist set fire to the front entrance of the synagogue, the hateful and appalling language from a protester at the Vancouver Art Gallery who praised the attacks on Israel and referred to terrorist organizations as heroes, and the recent assault of a young woman just last week who was knocked to the ground, dragged, and subjected to anti-Semitic slurs when she attended a protest. And I have a brief update for you on that one this morning and that uh, our major crime investigators and other members of the VPD made an additional arrest in that case just this morning uh, at a surrounding suburb to Vancouver. And there will be more information on that to follow, but I don't have anything else I can release on that at this time other than that our members are making really good progress on that file. Members of our Muslim and West Asian communities are also hurting. For some, their sense of safety and belonging has been impacted by Islamophobia. Things like hateful encounters with strangers and hurtful graffiti written on walls of schools and community centers. To be clear, we serve everyone in our community and I am committed to making sure everyone, regardless of their race, religion, language or culture, feels safe. Over the past year, we've worked closely with members of the Muslim and Jewish faiths and with leaders from the community at large to listen, to learn, to understand, and to address everyone's safety concerns. This work is ongoing, and I'm grateful to all the community leaders that have worked with us to address these complex issues. As we move into this weekend and towards the somber first anniversary of October 7th, we are continuing to work with community members to ensure a comprehensive policing strategy that meets the diverse needs and provides a sense of reassurance, calm, comfort and safety. In the coming days, you will see a significant and visible police presence throughout our city. We will also be working behind the scenes with officers that you will not see to assess and reassess potential risks to respond immediately to emerging threats and to share intelligence with our local, national and international public safety partners. Some examples of what you'll see is from our public safety unit. 
Um, those planning to visit the downtown core this weekend, you'll experience uh, increased congestion. There are a number of protests planned and there are significant likelihood of disorder and traffic delays. Officers from our public safety unit, which is a specialized team that is trained to manage large crowds and protests, will be deployed throughout the weekend. And although we support everybody's right to peacefully assemble and express themselves, people who break the law or those who incite violence and hatred will be subject to arrest and criminal charges. Our Metro teams are quick response teams that will deploy citywide to respond if major crimes, spontaneous protests, or other significant public safety events require immediate police attendance. Major crime section investigators are standing by to investigate hate motivated incidents and other serious crimes should they occur. These officers will support victims of crime, collect evidence, and prepare complex reports to Crown Council. Our highly trained tactical emergency response team members and uniformed patrol members will provide a highly visible police presence at various places of worship, community centers and gathering places in consultation with and support from community leaders with whom we've had discussions. Uniformed school liaison officers will be positioned at some faith-based schools during pickup and drop-off times on October 7th. They will maintain a high visibility presence to reassure parents and students and keep people safe. You will see more marked police cars doing proactive patrols. They will be performing these patrols near places of worship, community gathering places, including synagogues, mosques, and community centers. This will include extra patrols in and around SkyTrain stations in conjunction with the Metro Vancouver Transit Police. Our VPD Mobile Command Center has been staged outside the Jewish Community Center at Oak Street and West 41st. The Mobile Command Center serves as a command post during major events and police deployments. A public safety trailer will be positioned at a Vancouver synagogue. These trailers feature 360 degree cameras that record 24 hours a day. Their main function is to deter crime, however the recordings can be used as evidence if crimes occur. Our criminal intelligence unit, which is a team of specialized investigators, is actively engaged with the RCMP Integrated National Security Enforcement Team and other counterterrorism partners, locally, nationally, and internationally, to assess and monitor potential risks to Vancouver. The entire response will be overseen by a senior VPD commander who will coordinate VPD's deployments throughout the weekend and into next week when we mark the first anniversary of the October 7th attacks. I know that emotions are raw and people are experiencing a wide range of feelings right now. I also know that there are many diverse feeling, um, opinions in this city and feelings. And I don't expect everyone to have the same point of view about the military conflicts taking place in the Middle East. However, I do expect that people will treat each other with respect and not resort to violence when expressing their points of view. Public safety is our priority here at the VPD and we will not accept violence and hatred in our community. Happy to take any questions. When you say proactive, Muslim and uh, Jewish communities ask for this, or is this something from other? Well, long consultations. Yeah, it's, it's more long consultations. So we've been in contact with community leaders really over the last year on these issues. And this is something that we have discussed and um, there's universal agreement that we will do this. How many more extra police, I guess, give us a timeline. Is it within this week or just will things end? Will the special procedure end on Wednesday? And how many more police are on the clock? Um, I'm not going to get into specific numbers about how many more police are on the clock, but this will proceed over the next week and we'll assess as it goes and see how it plays out. You mentioned you're deploying the command post to one of the synagogues. Are you aware, is the VPD aware of any uh, threats against uh, the Jewish community for October 7th? So the mobile command center will be at the Jewish community center at 41st and Oak. We're not aware of any specific threats. However, um, there are, uh, we're aware of a lot of protests and demonstrations that are gonna be taking place. Just to give you an order of magnitude, we've got um, 18 events planned for this weekend. Four of those events are directly related to uh, conflict in the Middle East. And you mentioned that you're, well, you, you're sort of talking about ramping up uh, resources and things like that. With the budget crunch that you've come in the last uh, few weeks that was uh, announced, uh, yeah. are you, struggling with resources? Are you having to re-withdraw re resources to be able to cover this? 
No, I mean the budget, um, yeah, okay, if you want to talk about the budget. So just on that, yes, there has been significant budget pressure this year. Um, we are looking to be probably around six, $6.5 million over budget by the end of the year. That's been publicly reported, which for us in a gross budget of about 443 million, that'll put us just over 1%, probably 1.5% over budget, just so people understand the, the magnitude of that. Some of the pressures that we face this year that are extraordinary include the large number of protests, particularly following October 7th. That has been a definite pressure point for us, not just in protests, but other um, um, avenues we've taken to make sure that the uh, community is secure and safe. So a lot of extra officers involved in that. We had um, you know, a little bit of a, a venture into the NHL playoffs this year, which of course impacted our budget. We've got FIFA 2026, which while there will be extra funding coming for that, right now there's a lot of that funding that is coming from in-kind resources in the VPD, which is quite significant. We've got the uh, ongoing downtown east side cleanup on Hastings Street, where we assist the city with their cleanup. It's not really a police issue, but they have asked us to assist, but we have no extra funding for that. And we also have ongoing issues with um, mid-year adjustments with the city and their budget um, that we haven't been uh, compensated for mid-year. So there's a lot of discussions going on. We've also been hiring lots of officers. Um, as you know, there was an approval for 100 new officers. Our rate of hiring is excellent. Um, it's 1.6 times uh, the rate of attrition. So for every one officer that leaves the organization, we hire 1.6. With regards to the trailer that you said was going to be outside a specific synagogue, is it just one of those or are they going to be at multiple different locations? Uh, we have more than one trailer, but right now our plan is to deploy one. But we do have flexibility if we do need to deploy more. And just in terms of magnitude, can you put in perspective the amount of planning and preparation that's gone into anticipating this protest and, and potential civil unrest? Has anything like this ever happened in the city before around an issue like this? Um, lots of times. So we have a full-time team of emergency and operational planners that work full-time. That's all they do. We plan, you know, in an order of magnitude. So as I mentioned last year, we had a thousand protests just over. This year we're on track for about the same. But in addition to that, we have another 1,700 events that we have to plan for. So that's 2,700 events in a year, including major events like, you know, Celebration of Light, um, you know, major sporting events. Um, other major protests we've had in the city that require hundreds and hundreds of officers and sometimes over protracted periods of time like the Olympics and things like that. So we're definitely well experienced and well prepared to deal with an event like this. So stay away from language like unprecedented deployment or whatever it is. This it's is not unprecedented. Yeah. Yeah. This isn't, yeah, for example, I mean, if you're going to compare it to, um, you know, even like Celebration of Light or the Olympics, it's, it's not at that level. After Chief, you mentioned some of the challenges over the past year, and some of that includes people getting behind a microphone, spewing what is blatant hate speech. Yeah. Will police be looking out for hate speech like that uh, leading up to October 7th, and has the approach changed um, in that at all? Well, I mean, every protest is slightly differently. We take each case on its own merits. And at every event, um, and most events, like I say, are peaceful and lawful, which is, you know, one of the requirements under the, um, the laws of Canada. Like, you're allowed to protest about, demonstrate about whatever you want. And Section 2 of the Charter prevents, or allows you to do that. But what you're prevented from doing and not allowed to do is unlawful protests. So if there's any criminal acts, whether it's hate speech or assaults or violence or damaging property, um, people are subject to arrest. And we have arrested, um, just to give you a sense of that, um, so far in relation to these particular types of protests, we've undertaken 74 criminal investigations and we've recommended 47 criminal charges to Crown Counsel. Police can't be everywhere at once, so what should That's the right. public do if they hear speech like that? Yeah, so if people are seeing like really disturbing hate speech, um, everybody's got a phone now and we do take tips from the public. So if people are recording things and making a record of it, we will investigate that if we, if we do see a crime on a video. Sorry, can you clarify what, what do you mean by that hate speech? Because you mentioned people celebrating Hamas's attack. So is that hate speech? Um, a a two-part question. Yeah. Like, is this challenging you in terms of, because you guys have to determine if it's hate speech and then send it to the Crown. Is this conflict challenge and the protest challenging you on defining what hate speech is? Because you did mention simply celebrating Hamas's attack mm -hmm. and they stayed at 
non-state actor against a state actor in a foreign jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Is that hate speech? And can you just talk about the challenges? Yeah, so I mean, anything where we're talking about, because um, hate crime is a very complicated area of law, and I think sometimes the public um, may misconstrue what's hate crime and what's not hate crime. There's very defined sections in the criminal code that define what um, hate crime is, including advocating genocide of another group of people, things like that. Um, being at a protest and punching somebody in the face is not a hate crime as defined by the criminal code, but an offense like that where the hate element would come into it is that if you were convicted of that um, substantive offense of assault, then it would be an aggravating factor considered during sentencing. And then as far as actual words that are considered hate speech, there is case law on it and also consultation with Crown Counsel on um, you know, when they will accept charges. And on the specific hate crime sections of the criminal code, it has, has to actually be approved by the Attorney General of the province. And sorry, just to follow up with the pro-Hamas comments mm -hmm. like that, is that hate speech? Well, it depends. Like, every case is different. It depends what the person is saying. There are some things that you can say and other things you can't say. So it really will depend what the person is saying and what they're advocating for and um, the, the very specific nature of their comments. But specifically, people, I get if you're attacking someone or you're threatening someone, but mm -hmm. someone getting up on the microphone and celeb celebrating the attacks of October 7th, mm -hmm. saying that they're great, glorifying them, mm -hmm. is that going to be investigated um, yeah well we had a file like that and you guys have all reported on it widely so you know the case I'm talking about and that is it that particular case is one and I mentioned it in my comments that we have submitted to Crown and we are expecting criminal charges the 46 that you mentioned those are related to the Mideast conference um, when you say the, 40, the 47 where we've recommended charges, they're all related to, uh, yes, the protests and demonstrations in the Middle East conflict. After, after a year of rallies, what have you learned about policing both sides or all sides? Of um, well, we go by the law. So we do support lawful and peaceful protests. We do support people's right to gather, express their beliefs. Um, lawful assembly as guaranteed under Section 2 of the Charter, but and we will facilitate that when people have lawful protests, but what we will not put up with is violence or hatred or crimes um, against other people. Um, there's no criminality, no violence, no unlawfulness allowed, so that's where we draw the line. Okay, and when it comes to this weekend, how do you plan on policing both sides equally? Um, same way we always have for the last 138 years. Uh, sorry, you mentioned several events. One specific event uh, on October 6th um, features one of the most vocal groups in this conflict, uh, and they put out some fairly inflammatory posts and things of that nature. Are there different approaches that the police are going to take in terms of pre preemptively preventing confrontation or anything of that nature, or you know, are there any details we need to provide on specifically what's going to happen at those events? Thank you. Um, well, I can't tell you in advance specifically what's going to happen because they haven't occurred yet. But what I can say is that as far as proactive work, we reach out to the organizers or they reach out to us. In fact, um, many of the groups that are holding protests and demonstrations on a regular basis will reach out to us proactively and let us know that they're holding a protest. And they'll let us know what their goals are in the protest. And our, our frontline public order commanders will actually touch base with leaders at these protests and just say, you know, hi, I'm the, the VPD officer in charge of this protest. You know, you know, I'd like to know what you're planning today. And most times people are pretty cooperative. Not always, sometimes they can be uh, very uncooperative. But in many cases, we try and form a dialogue and we, uh, we come to terms with them and try and work through it together. Can you confirm which groups, like you know, the group like, say, Samadun or some things of that nature? No, I'm not going to get into specific groups.